Hi, and welcome back. Game five of AlphaGo versus the world. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond. We're doing all 60 games of the Master slash Magister, uh, which was out what AlphaGo was, was going by in uh, early 2017. A very exciting series, and we're just uh, working our, our way through as, as uh, various human uh, top professionals throw themselves <laughs> up against this uh, AI. So, Michael, who is our uh, who's our player today? Okay, game number five is Yu Ji Ying, five Don, and she is um, she was at the time um, I'm I feel safe in saying that she was the strongest female player in the world. Uh -huh. um, and she still is one of the strongest. She's probably the strongest Chinese player, and uh, at the time she already had some world championships under her belt so okay. she's, um, she was competing a lot with the top korean players like park and Choi. there's some some top korean female players who were um close to her strength but i think at the time she was the champion she was the strongest player and so, she has like, a nice style like she has a fast development and that was she had that even before the ais came and a very well-rounded player so she's um a very difficult opponent to play most for most players i think Ah, it's going to be interesting. So uh, we've had, we've had, we've let the, uh, the 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 guys have a shot. Let's let's uh, let's see how she does. So all right, we'll we'll go ahead and take a, a look at the game. Go for it. Okay, so this is still at the end of 2016, um, at the end of December, and it's the first batch of games. So um, in this game, AlphaGo has black, and again you can see as before. It is playing this big Shimari. It, in this version, it really liked the large knight's move Shimari. Later on, like in zero, you can see it playing a, a big two space Shimari, one, one space uh -huh. up. So it's going to change that gradually, but at this time, it really liked this Shimari. And human players were still fixed with the idea that either white's going to play uh, a Wariuchi here or this move here, uh, which also is going to lead to white playing this Wariuchi. So this was the pattern that we had at the time, and it was a very popular opening for both white and black. And so she's just playing something she's used to. It seems to be really normal, but um, as I have said before, when white does that, already the AIs are going to give black a slight advantage at this point. And the idea is that um, either white's going to play, nowadays, either white's going to play some kind of a Shimari here, um, with or without that approach move in the upper right, or White's going to continue with this. You might remember seeing this in the game I played against Takao. Um, uh -huh. I made an analysis for, for your channel um, on this game where I played, well, it was a bit different, but I used this variation in the lower right corner as a way uh -huh. to handle that Shimari. So this is a kind of, it's become a standard way for White to attack the large knight's move Shimari, the corner enclosure there. And it's almost like a Joseki now. So this is something that you would see nowadays, or white playing away to the lower left corner. Uh -huh. Yes, playing here is already supposed to be bad, which obviously is something we didn't know at the time. Right. And black plays the Kakari. And I think I've touched this in a different video, but um, again, white is supposed to play here, just to avoid black pressing as black did. Uh, actually, black did not press this way. Was it game number three or number four, where we had a very similar position Without, Very similar. This, with, without this exchange here. And mm -hmm. the orientation of the board might have been a little bit different with blacks, mm -hmm. all of black stones on the upper side or something like that. But it is a very similar position. And when white has played this Kakari, very strangely, in this version, AlphaGo is playing the, the Taisha Joseki, this large knight's move. Avalanche. Whereas without that Kakari, without that Kakari, AlphaGo was playing this move. And I never really figured out why there was this difference. Um, this, is, this is perfectly okay for white, I mean for black. And this would have been okay, but AlphaGo in this position where there's that Kahari liked to play this. So I was finding a variation where um, there is a ladder that is changed by the fact that black had that stone. Okay. And so I think this is the variation that I'm gonna be talking about. Where when black has that stone there, black can uh, jump out. And if white continues this way, then the ladder is going to favor black. This ladder is going to hit that black stone there. Oh, wow. So um, I had a hypothesis 
that this was why AlphaGo was choosing this variation. In actuality, okay. White will avoid that by um, instead when Black jumps here, White will probably play some move like this. And this is perfectly okay. It's, it's another variation that would be about even. Um, in fact, I, I would argue that White probably should have played this attachment here. And Black would have a choice of wedging, or actually Black could go into this variation, which is also something that um, you can see sometimes with computer programs, so it's something like this, not, not wedging in between. So Black has a choice when White plays this attachment. White Black does have a choice of plus just playing this honey. And in modern Go, you can see both, both of these variations. Uh -huh. But in the game, White played this way. And I have to excuse you because this was an extremely popular Joseki at that time. It was played by professionals for both sides. And it was supposed to be dead even. But actually, once White gets into this Joseki, it's already very bad for White. Like it's, it's getting close to 60% for Black already. Wow. That's winning percentages. And then and just, at this point, it would still be okay if White had um, if White had played away maybe if White had played away to the left side, the upper left area. Uh -huh. um, but it was standard for people to curl once more. Um, and if Black extends, then White can play towards the left side. Uh -huh. So that was the idea we had. But AlphaGo plays away, and we're going to see this pattern in a number of games. But when Black plays away here, Black's winning percentage. According to computer programs, computer AIs, Black's already at 62% here and winning oh, by wow. 10 points on the board. Wow. And so um, White jumped out. This is also a point where I'm going to repeatedly say that White should play here, but it's going to be very difficult to make this work. White has to find a way to deal with this stone on the left side after Black attacks here. It's not going to be breaking out in the center. Maybe White's going to play something like this um, and just chisel off one stone on the side and look at look to uh, for a chance to cut it a later in the game something like and in any case for a human player it's going to take a lot of work to make this move work but according to ai's this is the better way for white to play once mm -hmm. white jumps here and black gets the kakari here black just has so much more speedy development in this game and and then black slides into the corner um, if white slides here, white still somewhere, black still has something like 60 so percent, 60 to 3 percent. But in the game white played here, and I'd say that as far as AlphaGo is concerned, when black does play this double Kakari, and black's going to take control of the upper side like this, um, and black has a living shape on the left side, black has controlled the upper side, and white doesn't really have any ca enough cash to make up for that. And the pattern that you're going to see in these games that we're going to get this Joseki in the lower left a number of times because it was a very popular Joseki for people to play with white at that time. Every time the human player is going to have a very, very difficult time trying to attack this black group. And you're going to see top professionals, world famous professionals um, having the same trouble. It's, it's going to be impossible for white to effectively attack this black group. And white doesn't have anything to make up for the huge lead in development that black has. So at this point, the game is just about over already. So just a couple of things before we wrap. But I mean, you know, just just to remind folks, this was this was in uh, early 2000. Um, it was at 18. the end of 2016, actually. 16, yeah. 2016. So uh, early 2017. This is this is just three years ago. And this years, it changed everything. It like, changed this, everything. Yeah, this 60 right. 60-game series changed a lot, and then we changed even more when we had AIs that we could install in our own computers. Right, right. But just what you know, your your point there that, and we've seen this a couple times already. And it sounds like we're going to see it some more, where you've got these perfectly, mm -hmm. you know, good, strong professionals playing, you know, what they've been taught, things that have been tr tried and tested. Yes. Uh, and and they're and, and it's not like AlphaGo is you know real except you, the game you showed uh, the last game there was a new uh, a new joke a new Joseki if you will mm -hmm. something that hadn't been seen uh, but in this game nothing really so special right I mean well, the most is just playing very natural looking yeah you know, like moves <laughs> and it's just that the whole over its control of the overall position is so much more accurate. 
and it's positional judgment, basically. I think one of the biggest things about AIs is the fact that they have very stable, um, accurate, and reliable positional judgment. And that's true of all of the computers that came after AlphaGo using the same system. Mm -hmm. um, they have very good positional judgment. And that used to be something that could only be attained with a lot of experience, with several decades of experience for a human player. And, and AlphaGo was ahead of that um, and taking it to an extreme, you might say. Right. Very exciting. Very exciting. So that'll do it for for this uh, for this game. Of course, we are working our way through all 60 games in this series, and this will be uh, part of volume two uh, of our AlphaGo to Zero series that we're working on. And of course, Michael will have uh, full commentaries for those. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.